Hi, I'm Matt from Wex Photographic and today I'm going to be explaining how to master your camera's noise reduction settings. Noise reduction allows you to remove some of the grain and coloured speckles that occurs in your images, which you often see when you're shooting in low light, and it's particularly noticeable in large flat areas of little detail. Today's cameras are really sophisticated at removing this, but knowing when to use it and how much to apply is useful as it will help you to get the best image quality possible. There are two occasions when you might want to use noise reduction. One is when you're shooting at high sensitivities and one is when you're shooting long exposures. We're going to take a look at each one in turn. First, high sensitivities or ISO settings, which you generally use when you're shooting in darker conditions. As a general rule, image noise increases as you use higher sensitivities, with normal noise visible at sensitivities such as ISO 6400 and 12800 than at lower ones such as ISO 100 and 200. Many cameras today allow you to set low, normal and high levels of noise reduction. When you select a low level of noise reduction, the camera attempts to filter out only the most obvious noise. This is ideal when your image is only likely to be affected by little noise, such as when the lighting isn't too bad and you may be only using a sensitivity such as ISO 800 or 1600. This setting should help you to remove visible noise in your scene, and it's a good option when you're viewing images at their full size, when you're cropping into images, or when you're printing enlargements. Next up, the medium or normal option. This is designed for more obvious noise, which can form when you're shooting in poor light and at higher sensitivities than before. This is usually more effective at removing noise than the low option, but it often comes at the expense of details in your scene. It's a good option when you want images to be usable straight away, such as for printing, but if you've got more time, you may prefer to process these with a little more care and time on your computer later on. Finally, the high option. This is designed for particularly noisy images, such as those captured at the highest end of your camera's sensitivity range. This is, however, also the most aggressive option on details in your images, so it's only really designed to be used as a last resort, perhaps when you're only going to be viewing and using images at smaller sizes. Of course, if you're shooting raw images, you don't need to worry about this too much as you're shooting as you can make all necessary noise adjustments in post-processing. The second type of noise reduction is for long exposures, which most cameras deem to be those timed at a second or longer. The camera deals with this slightly differently than with images captured at high sensitivities. Instead of trying to smooth out the noise once an image has been captured, it captures a second frame right after the first one without any exposure to light. This allows it to see where the noise is forming, which shows where it needs to be removed from the original image. Because of this, it's much better for retaining image quality than the high sensitivity option, so it's useful to keep on at all times. For more tips and advice, subscribe to our channel, visit us on Twitter, Facebook or Google+, or check out wexphotographic.com forward slash blog.